third year has been far, far better than first and second year. If anyone's watching this and they are a second year medic and you're thinking, God, I bloody hate this, it does get better. <laughs> Hi there, um, everybody that's watching Ryan's channel. Uh, my name's Cormac. I've been on one of his videos before, back in first year. Uh, so at the moment now I'm a third year medical student uh, at Newcastle University. Originally from a little town called Skipton, which is in North Yorkshire near a place called Harrogate. Some of you might have heard of it. And today uh, I'm doing a little video to give you sort of an idea of what third year medicine is all about uh, and what you can look forward to when you reach that stage. Alright, so uh, the first thing we're going to discuss is how third year is very very different from first and second year. So first and second year is kind of like book, reading, revision, that's how you do your learning but third year is the complete opposite. You actually do sort of very hands-on learning so it's learning by doing as opposed to by reading. Uh, and for me personally I found that a much more useful way to, to learn. I prefer to get involved in things. I'm not very good at revising. I'm, I'm genuinely quite a lazy person. It's kind of like uh, sort of beginning to enter that proper journey to becoming a proper healthcare professional. So the hands-on stuff, it goes through different kind of uh, different rotations. So you'll start on FOCP, which is kind of the foundations. And from here, you're going to rotate through all sorts of different specialities very, very quickly you get overloaded with all sorts of information, but you're going to get to do all sorts of things. So you're going to be taking histories from real patients on the wards, uh, in clinics, in GPs. You're going to be doing uh, examinations. You're going to be uh, getting the chance to do cannulas, taking bloods, even catheterizing patients and testing urine. Not as glamorous as it sounds, believe it or not. But that is what you sort of get to look forward to and, and you, you don't you don't really experience that in first and second year but the whole point of third year is sort of build up your confidence uh, and sort of get to know what to expect and what's expected of you once you do reach the level of a, of a, of a graduate medical student. So as I mentioned before there's uh, the FOCP which is where you go through sort of cardiology, respiratory, gastroenterology etc etc uh, and kind of get a taste of all the specialities and that's in the sort of first term. After that you do what's called these junior rotations, so it's where you do sort of like four week blocks or eight week blocks on different umbrella terms almost. Uh, so ones like long term conditions, this can include a whole host uh, of things like stroke, cancer, the journey that the patients have to go through. Then there's paediatrics for me, women's health, mental health and infectious diseases. And they're all great because they're completely different parts of medicine that are almost unrelated apart from maybe women's and child and you get a general uh, feel of what it's like to be part of the team in each one. So you can go and attend things like multidisciplinary team meetings where you can understand sort of uh, the professionals that are involved in the care of a patient and how complex it actually is to reach a group decision. So I started my first rotation on child's health, so paediatrics. Uh, and that is quite scary to be honest because obviously I'm not great with kids. <laughs> But you do have to learn the sort of the conditions that they have and child's treatment is much more different to adult treatment. You know, there's different medications, different doses, different conditions as well that adults don't get. Uh, and I remember one particular occasion when you do sort of a newborn baby examination and one of the things is where you have to check the reflexes of the baby and make sure that they're there because if they're absent it could indicate some sort of neurological problem. And one of them is called the Mora Reflex, and you literally hold the baby like this, and then you drop it like that, and it's supposed to go like that, and kind of freak out. And you're doing this in front of the mum, and the mum knows that you're a medical student, and I remember her just like watching me, thinking, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> but the moral behind the story is that, don't be nervous to get involved, and it, it, it will seem scary to sort of do these examinations on patients, on you know, real, real patients, and you haven't had this experience before. But it's really, really important to get involved and really get what you can out of the experience. That is the most essential thing I can say. Then after that, you go into women's health. Well, that's what I did anyway. Women's health, which 
Again, gives you all these different opportunities to see childbirth as well, actually got involved in a C-section. Uh, mental health, actually got to go on a, on a crisis team outing where they go to patients' homes that are in like trouble and they've called up saying, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to do something, things like that. Infectious diseases, I've, I got to speak to people that have been to all parts of the globe and managed to gather uh, weird and wonderful diseases like schistosomiasis and dengue fever and things like that. And then at the moment now I'm on long-term conditions, which is a little bit depressing, but gives you a good outlook on what the patient is actually going through. And uh, it really, really opens up your perspective as to what the patient themselves is thinking. It's just a crucial part of your development. So the whole point of the content is basically to really develop you as a professional uh, and turn you into the best possible doctor you can be, basically. Yeah, so the next thing, uh, time. So I hate this. Time, oh my god, you just lose it so much. So it's literally, I've described it to my, my mates as like unpaid full-time work. So I'm in about 35 hours a week in the hospitals, which I've got to get there and get back, and sometimes it takes up to an hour. Uh, and that's, that's Monday to Friday. So the one bad thing about it is the amount of time you do have to sacrifice. You can't really go out during the week anymore. That's strictly for weekends and... If you are going to stay up late one night, you're going to pay the price in the morning when you're waking up at 7 o'clock or half 6 or whatever time you have to go in for that day. So time is a big issue, but the sacrifice is worth it um, because you do get some fantastic experience. Uh, and it's just, it's probably, probably it's, it's much more useful than it, that, you know, to, to meet a patient than it is to read a book about a patient. So on top of time, obviously your social life is kind of determined a bit by it. So you might have friends that are doing other courses, uh, like I have friends across me that are doing accounting and finance, and they're a little bit freer than me. And they might they sometimes go on Thursday nights and Tuesday nights, and I can't really join them. And it sucks a bit, but it's important not to not to get too upset about it. So don't feel like you're missing out because you are being given this absolute privilege to, to to speak to patients and examine them as, as I've mentioned before and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this these patients they, they will tell you the most personal details because they see you as a professional and it's your responsibility to uphold that image so you can't go out and come in hungover uh, you can't stay up light stay up late sorry watching a film and then coming in at one two in the morning and then being absolutely knackered the next day and then you know, if you yawn while you're taking history from a patient, it's, it can seem quite rude. So you do have to sacrifice uh, a little bit of your social life, but that's all to do with the fact that you, you do have this responsibility to act professionally at all times. I know it sounds a bit formal, but it is part, it's part of the job, the unpaid job. So because of, particularly in the first term, the FOCP, which stands for Foundations of Clinical Practice, you get exposure to like loads of different specialities uh, some of which you like some of which you won't like that's the whole point of it so this brings me to my point is that that exposure to so many different parts of medicine if you haven't decided or you haven't even thought about it it'll really sort of hone down your decision and sort of thinking you know what I really really enjoy this or oh, I'm, I'm quite good at this and then you can sort of decide whether or not you want to get more and more experience in it because then you can add to your sort of portfolio and future employers are going to look at that portfolio when you decide to specialize if you want to uh, specialize in cardiology for example you're going to want to start getting experience in cath labs and uh, in clinics and things like that to kind of show that you're interested and show that you're committed to learning about that speciality uh, and you want to throw yourself at it so that exposure to it early on in third year is really really useful in, in helping you decide whether or not you, you fancy that speciality and equally whether or not you don't fancy that speciality. Personally for me I really don't like dermatology. Uh, I think the consultant that teaches us knows it as well which is a bit awkward <laughs> but I love cardiology. Uh, I, I sort of had already figured that out in first year but I think third year kind of really solidified that decision. Uh, and it, it will probably have sort of a similar effect on you as well. Now, uh, you're examined slightly differently in third year. 
So in first and second year you'll do written examinations and an OSCE, which are these sort of stations where you'll do a history or do an exam or do a clinical skill like uh, taking blood from a fake arm, something like that. And you do that in third year, you do a written exam and the OSCE, but you also do things called Moslers. So this is at the end of each rotation, so I don't know if you remember earlier I mentioned the, uh, the junior rotations. So at the end of like each block you're going to do a Mosler. So a Mosler is where you get, basically the consultant's going to go and find a patient somewhere on the ward and they're going to consent them and then they're going to say to you, right, you're going to take history, do an exam, I'm going to mark it, then I'm going to ask you questions like what's the diagnosis, what investigations do you want, what are the risk factors, what are the complications, what's the management you'd like to do. And they're going to test sort of all your aspects of your knowledge, your professionalism, your skills, you know. Uh, and that's, it can be quite nerve-wracking that. I know a lot of people can sort of fall under the pressure. But it's actually, it's just such a useful way because that is basically what you're going to be doing as a doctor day in, day out. So you need to get really good at them. And you can, because that's what surgery is all about. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking histories and doing exams. So there's the Moslers. Uh, and then the actual exams themselves, I think they're all pretty much multiple choice now, so they're actually quite easy. That's another, oh yeah, that's another good thing, no assignments, none, uh, and the exams, yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit easier than first and second year. Uh, they're all multiple choice, and basically it's just like, oh this person's come from some sort of like Southeast Asian country and they haven't had their TB vaccine, what do you think they've got, TB? Like something like that, it's, it's really, really basic. So. Yeah, that's actually one massive advantage is that there's no assignments and the exams are a little bit easier, so you don't have to be too worried about revision. I remember in second year, absolutely bricking it from revision. I started like two months early because I messed up my January exams, so I, I did not want to reset. On saying that though, if you fail the third year exams, you have to reset the whole year. So do not slack. At least give yourself like a month to revise for these exams. That would be my best advice. I've started now. Um, but all you have to do, what I've done, which is actually quite a nice little bit of advice if you want to use this, is they'll give you a handbook for each uh, each uh, rotation that you do, and in that rotation they'll have the core conditions that you're supposed to learn. So what I've done is a Word document, the core condition, the symptoms, so what the patients are going to present with, what you'll find in examination, the investigations you want to do, the risk factors, the complications of the condition, and then how you treat it. I've done that for every single core condition, so now it's all like in one little file, all summarised, and I can just learn that, because that is literally what the exams are on. Uh, so I, re I really, really strongly recommend doing that as you're learning it, so that you have it there for you, for when you actually have, want to start revising. So, yeah, out of 10, I would rate third year 8, 8 out of 10. Drops the 2 because of the amount of time you have to put into it, and sort of how much your social life suffers because of it. But the eight because of just the hands-on experience that you get, uh, the amount of involvement you can have within a sort of the patient's time in hospital and with the actual procedures that will be going on, like taking bloods and things, uh, I can actually do it now, which I couldn't before. Uh, but yeah, going back to the involvement in the patient's lives, it's not always happy, you know, happy or oh, they're fine, they go home, but still really really nice. I remember one particular patient who was an old woman uh, and she had this condition called motor neuron disease. Uh, I remember just having a chat with her and I started taking the history talking about the condition and I was supposed to take like 15 minutes in the end I spent about 45 minutes talking to her about her garden and the birds that went into the garden uh, and that was it <laughs> and then they obviously they offered to present the history and I was like, oh, I don't know, but she likes birds. But she was super nice. Uh, I don't know how she's doing now. But it was just it's just it's just really nice to kind of have that involvement. And it's something that other courses, you just you don't get that with other courses. That is the best thing about medicine. Uh, and that's why I chose it. Oh like this video, subscribe, comment. Let Ryan know how bloody brilliant it was, so he'll get me more. If he gets like 300 likes, then he said he'll let me do another video for the for the channel. So please give me the opportunity. 
the thumb bot, thumb uh, in the bottom right or below the screen. Uh, apparently my social media details are going to be left in, in the description box below as well. Give me a follow if you fancy. Uh, and yeah, good luck with everything you're trying to do. Good luck with your future endeavours. I wish you all the best. In a bit.